Rattigliano on the other sideline. And of course, Rattigliano may not have that good a record, but he's after the Dallas Cowboys today. Ready for the kickoff. The Cowboys to return. The Browns in their brown uniforms with the orange and white trim. And we're set from Irving, Texas. Steve Cox. And back comes Ron Fellows to the 28-yard line. Fellows from the University of Missouri, tackled by Curtis Weathers of the Browns. So on the field, the Cowboys with Danny White at quarterback. He has Tony Dorsett, Ron Springs as running back. The receiver, Tony Hill, Landry Lauding Hill for his play, both in the preseason, regular season, the all-time pass catcher, Cowboy history, Drew Pearson, the tight end, Doug Crosby, is from the starting job over Billy Joe Dupree. Donovan, Richards, Rafferty, Peterson, and Cooper, the offensive line. First down at the 28-yard line. And the quick out, and it's complete to Pearson for short yardage at the 33-yard line. Second down and five. 48, Lawrence Johnson in on the tackle for Cleveland. Defensively, Harris and Bradley and Robinson, the front three for the Browns. They're linebackers, and they feel that this is one of the strengths of the Cleveland club. Banks from Cousineau, we talked about them. Leading tackler the last five years. Ambrose in the middle along with Bill Cower. Cornerbacks are Johnson and Dixon with Burrell and the veteran Clarence Scott at safety. Second down and five. Each club with two wins and a loss coming into this Thanksgiving day. Ron Springs across the 35 and it appears to be close to a first down near the 38-yard line before number 50, Tom Cousineau, can make the tackle for Cleveland. Cleveland Browns were talking about the difficulty they had getting ready for this game. Not so much a matter of time, which was hard enough in itself, but they also had rain and sleet and a very muddy field to practice on. Coach Rattigliano not making any excuses for his team. They're out here. They feel they have a fair shot at these Dallas Cowboys. It's short of the first down by less than a yard. Third down, tight formation for Dallas. That's a good conversion rate, over 50% for the Cowboys. behind Cosby and they get the first down at the 40. Ron Springs the ball carrier. Dick, one of the unusual things that we will see on defense for these Cleveland Browns today is Chip Banks going down from his linebacking position to a down position in pass rushing situations. Actually moves in a defensive event. And although he's only 230, 235 pounds, He's uh, quick enough and strong enough to give the big defense our offensive tackles to run for the money. Thanks, wears number 56 and leads the Browns with three sacks in their first three games. First down at the 40. A play action. White to Hill. Out of bounds. Complete at the 47 of the Browns. Danny White. Passing again on first down. Two first down situations, two passes. 13 yards on the pickup by White as he fakes the door set into the line and picks out Tony the Thrill Hill. And what a fine pass. Hill had gotten himself open on the far side and the gap in that zone carried it out of bounds for the first down. Hill from Stanford, the leading receiver for the Cowboys. That is his 16th catch. The Browns have not allowed a touchdown in the first half thus far in three games. Dorsett, 40, and to the 35, and a first down for Tony Dorsett. Dorsett breaking outside, but what a great block by Drew Hill, or by Tony Hill, number 80. He just leveled the linebacker coming out to give Dorsett room to make that fine run. Quick look at it for yourselves. You'll see Hill come all the way across the field. Looking at him there. Now watch the shot he'll give right here. That's Clarence Scott, number 22. <laughs> he just leveled him. First down, Cowboys. For the opening kickoff, they're to the Cleveland 35-yard line. Springs. Five. He gets eight yards before Cousineau can drag him down. Two former Buckeyes involved in that contact. We talked about the new faces in this lineup. Cousineau and Banks. 
You get a chance to see number 50, Cousineau, right there. Head to head, Howard Richards, the man who is banging on him. There comes Bank, Banks in from the outside. So on second and two at the Cleveland 27, White sends his two wide receivers, Pearson and Hill, to the right. Springs to the left, and Dorsett get the first down and average back would have been tackled for a three-yard loss Dorsett turns it into a four-yard gain and a first down Johnny Dorsett nursing a sore toe he has the equivalent of what they call a turf toe it's from an old injury As a matter of fact he dropped a mirror on his foot of all things but it has given him some fits did not practice the early part of the week but still with such incredible acceleration I don't think he knows how fast he can run well, he makes you tackle air, as you saw on that replay. Drew Pearson to the right, Hill to the left. First down at the 23 of the Browns. First possession of the game, and White looking for six. Almost intercepted by Lawrence Johnson, who has Cleveland's two interceptions this year. Good reaction to the ball by Johnson. Ron Bolton, the normal corner that you've seen for years on the left side of that Cleveland defense, has been replaced by Lawrence Johnson. And Johnson here showing fine speed as he makes up the difference to knock that ball away from Drew Hill. Quick look inside at the kind of protection that Danny White had. Quick pass, but plenty of time. And as you said, Dick, just an excellent defensive play. Drew Pearson, who has a touchdown in each of the first three Dallas games and looking for four for four, denied by Johnson. Second and ten, Dorsett to the 15-yard line. A gain of seven more before Hanford Dixon, number 29, the cornerback from southern Mississippi, can make the stop. See Drew Pearson, number 88, talking to Coach Landry. He'll carry the play onto the field, give it to Danny White. White, of course, will call a play, and they'll go from there. Crowd of 65,000 at Vasella, but there are a lot of empty seats at Texas Stadium. They had over 13,000 no-shows for their game on Sunday as they beat Tampa Bay, and at the moment, there are at least that many empty seats today. Third down and two. A long two. First shotgun for White. On the blitz. And he can't find Dorsett, and that was Chip Banks, and how quickly Banks, that rookie linebacker, was on top of White and forced him to throw prematurely, and that stops the Dallas drive. Field goal unit comes on. Quick look at Danny White. Now watch from the outside of your picture, blitzing to the inside with incredible speed, and that's the kind of thing that Chip Banks can do for that Cleveland defense. He was on top of Danny White before he had a chance to get that football away. A 32-yard field goal attempt by Rafael Septien. He is one for three this year. All pro last season. Call it 33 yards. And it is no good. He misses to the right side. So the Cowboys, with an impressive drive, they are stopped inside the Cleveland 20, and then Septien misses wide to the right. The drive lasted nearly five minutes with no score. Bryson on the right side. Second and eight. Threw it on his first carry, and the big pullback is out to about the 27-yard line. It'll be third down and three. Defensively, Dallas Cowboys flex defense one of the few four man defensive lines left Jones Dutton White and Martin all familiar household names with Hegman Runick and Brown some changes at linebacker D.D. Lewis gone retired Everson Walls Dennis Thurman Barnes and Downs three free agents and an 11th round draft pick are the four deep men for Dallas Walls of course led the NFL as a rookie in interceptions with 11 last year Slowed down through it, and then there were plenty of white shirts to help out. The great strength of this Dallas team, of course, is against the running game. And if you're going to beat them, you have to throw the ball. You have to be able to throw it on first and ten. You have to throw it on second and medium yardage and third and short. 
Ron Fellows will be at the other end as Steve Cox with a 38 and a half yard average will kick to Fellows who stands at the 28. He's a rookie from the University of Hawaii. Home up in the state of Washington. A 42-yard punt and no return. Timeout here in Irving, Texas. Midway through the first quarter. No score. When a business grows, it often grows out of control. Back in Irving, Texas, where there is no score. Cleveland, the leader overall in this series. Most of their wins coming early on in the... 60s and were the opponents of the Cowboys in the very first Thanksgiving Day game hosted by Dallas. This is their 15th now. Dallas won that first game and their favorites to win today. Fumble by White and he's covered immediately by Chip Banks and Banks was in on the quarterback once again. The rookie from Southern California, an All-American, led the Trojans in tackles as a junior and a senior. And was the third player picked in last spring's draft behind Ken Sims and Johnny Cooks. They tell me that he drew the biggest pair of shoulder pads ever issued by the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> what a build. And he can run. He covers a lot of great names that had great upper bodies. Second down and long. A little reverse to spring. 30. And he's to the 33-yard line. 51 Eddie Johnson could not make the tackle Tom Cusano ranging laterally and that is one of his many strengths his ability to get to the ball carrier on the sidelines to make the tackle Cusano a very dedicated player in fact uh, they say he brings his lunch out there he spends an awful lot of time with the films preparing himself outstanding player in the Canadian League for three years and they, they did uh, I asked one of the players where where Kuzno was they said look for a guy with a big bulge in his back pocket <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's been paid well Ritigliano takes out four men and put four speedier linebackers and defensive backs on a pass situation third and seven as the hunting team comes on. Chance to watch Tony Dorsett doing something else that he does very well, running a pass pattern. He'll go down, make a little inside move right there and drive outside Judson Flint, number 20, the man who's on top of him. But Danny White just didn't have enough time. It was Banks again who had his uh, hand in Danny White's face. Again, the Browns have not allowed a touchdown in the first half yet this year and only three points total in the first two quarters. Averaging 41.7, hits a beauty. That's rookie Dwight Walker watching it kick out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Dwight Walker from Nickel State, the return man. White, not only a fine quarterback, but an outstanding kicker. Cleveland will start from the 19-yard line when we return. Seven minutes and 13 seconds remitting first quarter. Be at work. Interception for touchdown. Beat the Lions today. 13 to 6. We have no score midway through the first quarter. Cleveland from its 19. The play action. Sight to Newsom. What a catch at the 37 yard line by Ozzy Newsom of Alabama. An 18 yard reception by Ozzy Newsom, number 82. There were three Dallas Cowboys on Newsom. Watch the pass develop. Newsom will be breaking to the outside on the left-hand side of your screen. There you see the three Cowboys, and Newsom takes a perfectly thrown ball, but it had to be out in front of him. If it had been behind, there was a chance for an interception. Bob Brunick, Michael Downs, and Mike Hegman, the three defenders for the Cowboys. What a player. Newsom in four years in Cleveland, he's caught 213 passes. 37. Quick pass to Charles White, who scrambles away to the 40-yard line. And White almost maintaining his balance, had some running room downfield. Another former All-American from Southern California, the 1979 Heisman Award winner. We have two Heismans pitted against each other today. Dorsett, who won it three years prior to White. 
We talked about Randy White. There he is. Watch him now working on the offensive guard, Robert Jackson. Coming quickly out of his stance, he's going to try and put the squeeze on the quarterback here. Jackson doing a good job there of, of holding him out, really banging at him. Back to live action. Sight going long to Peacher, but way off the mark. Peacher had the inside taken away by Dennis Thurman, the Cowboy cornerback. And so Sight had only one choice to keep it away from the defense and Peter wasn't looking for it there. This is the kind of situation that Sam Rotigliano wanted to avoid. It's third and long. The Cowboys will use a nickel defense. They'll run five, six defensive backs into the game. And of course, with that big defensive line, with the problems we described to you, they can really wreak havoc, havoc on uh, Brian Sype. He needs time to throw that football. Marty Schottenheimer talking to his defensive crew as they anticipate their return to the game. Third down and seven from the 40. Full blitz and incomplete intended for feature as Dennis Thurman. It appeared that both cornerbacks were coming on the blitz and Sipe slow getting up as Thurman got to him just as he released the ball. Sipe is finally getting off the ground, but he took a helmet right in the breadbasket as Thurman just leaped through the air and hit him. You get an idea why these quarterbacks uh, come out of a Sunday ball game or a Thursday game in this case with some real aches and pains. You won't see the finale of that hit, but you get the general idea. Merlin uh, out of the shotgun. That's a new wrinkle for the Cleveland Browns. Certainly is. It's something they haven't done before, and if Sipe has his way, they, maybe they won't do it again. <laughs> Bellows inside his 20. Steve Cox with a beautiful high kick. Bellows at the 18. 25. To the 32-yard line. A courageous and successful return by Ron Bellows. Mike Whitwell, a rookie from Texas A&M. Bill Jackson, a rookie from North Carolina, collaborated on the tackle. Timeout. 527 left in first quarter to the 40-yard line. An eight-yard gain before Curtis Weathers, number 55, can make the hit. Excellent block by Springs on the play. Ron leading the play around the left side of that defense. And you get an idea why Landry has built this offense around Tony Dorsett. You see Springs working right there on number 29 on the outside, Hanford, Hanford Dixon. Dixon, of course, uh, known more for his speed than he is for his aggressiveness on the running plays. Second down and two. a pass on a throwaway down and he gets crossed up right here. Dorsett gets outside of the defense and a couple of defenders already had dropped back deep. Clifford Burrell coming up, Clinton Burrell coming over to finally make the stop. You see how quickly Dorsett is outside of the defense here. Tony Hill, number 80, doing a good job of blocking out there. But Dorsett is really showing his stuff and showing no ill effect from that knee injury. Averaging nearly 10 yards a carry, Merlin. That's Dorso, excuse me. Five rushes, almost 50 yards. This is Springs, 40. Fumbles, and Cleveland recovers at the 34-yard line. Some vicious tackling, and number 49, Clinton Burrell, up with a loose ball. As Springs took some mean hits. Right there, a great stop. Burrell, number 49, just talked about him on the other side. Watch the play here. As he's going to come down to the inside. He'll cut back, and just as he gets to the inside, it's right there. A full speed hit by number 49, Clinton Burrell. Stripped the ball away. Timeout. Cleveland's ball. 3.43 left in the first quarter. Much of a hole. He saw White take a little stutter step looking for daylight. There was none, so he continued his course straight ahead for a couple. Don Smerick, number 60, Hegman, 58, made the tackle. John Dutton injured, injured a shoulder last week. 
Merrick, Merrick, and they're getting a chance to play as he did during that last game. He's, he's a giant. Must be a tough man. Last year not only went through a knee injury, but was shot uh, outside of a Dallas Disco here and recovered from both those injuries to make his way back onto the uh, lineup of the Dallas Cowboys. Bullet went right through his chest, so you talk about Thanksgiving and things to be happy and joyful about. Smirig just lucky to be alive in there contributing in that defensive line. Shotgun again. Third and three. Complete to Dino Hall and the little running back goes out of bounds at the Dallas 35 with a first down. So the Browns adopting the shotgun formation and for Sipe it works to Dino Hall. Sipe I'm sure relishing the fact that the shotgun traditionally gives you a little more time stunt there on the right side of the defensive line for the Cowboys trying to take advantage of that injury over there to Doug Deacon but Sipe with plenty of time to throw the football gets it comfortably into the hands of Dino Hall. Two minutes ten seconds left in the first quarter it's scoreless Cleveland with its deepest drive against Dallas. Again first down pass play and good protection then going long to Logan intercepted. Everson Walls has it again. What a player he is. with time to throw that football. Actually missed through it. Threw it to the right-hand side of the receiver. Logan was breaking for the sideline. May have broken off the pattern, but you see the ball thrown here. Watch Logan turn back to the inside, but it's the defender who then has the advantage. Walls going up, taking the ball over his inside shoulder. Everson Walls, his second interception this year, had 11 last year to lead the National Football League as a free agent rookie. What a story his is. A happy young man. From the four-yard line, still no score, 202 left in the quarter. Dorsett buys three, second and seven for Dallas. Back to Everson Walls, it is such a, you know, for the, the underdog, the long shot, Everson Walls was not drafted. He went to Grambling. He's a Dallas native. He grew up two miles from the Dallas Cowboy training camp. Mel Renfro was his hero. He makes the club last year and goes on to lead the NFL in interceptions with 11. And he has two already this year. He had three in the preseason. He's a real commodity. Play action. White from his end zone. That could be intercepted, but Cosby, Cosby catches it for Dallas. Oh, my. Curtis Weathers, number 55, on a hard blitz from the outside, right over the top of Danny White. See Chip Banks coming from the other side. They had a blitz coming both ways. Weathers, the man that hit him just as he is about to throw that football. The ball just flutters out and was up there for grabs. But it was Cosby, number 84, the big 6'6 tight end that said, no, no, that's my football. He goes up and takes it away from Lawrence Johnson. What a play. Almost fair catch that pass. Set a two point for Cleveland. Dallas maintains the ball on the first down. Dorsett, the first time today, stopped without a gain as Chip Banks and Marshall Harris were there to make the stop at the Dallas. Let's see where they mark the ball. At the 18-yard line, it'll be a loss of a yard. Nobody beats Cleveland. Well, Cowboys would like a shot at that. Browns have had a fine season this year. Great preseason, and uh, of course, except for that loss against in the last minutes against Philadelphia, a perfect season thus far. And so the first quarter comes to an end here at Irving Stadium. Tom Landry and Sam Ritigliano, each coach looking for something on the scoreboard. The Browns have driven twice to no score, and our once in Dallas has just intercepted Cleveland's best chance at a scoring opportunity. Before you pick Panthers, when you come to the Cotton Bowl, this is Danny White. In Irving, Texas, no score. Dallas with the football. Second and 11 at its 18 yard line. Four set, and he is hit immediately at the 12 yard line by Tom Cousineau. Oh, he came in like a shot. 
One of the gifts that Cousineau has is the ability to read plays quickly. And on that particular play, he read the draw almost instantly. Watch how quickly he's into that defense or that offensive backfield right there. He got a hold of Dorsett before he had a chance to take more than two steps. With 4.65 speed and 225 pounds, a lot of lateral mobility, he's likened uh, to Randy Gratishar, another Ohio State linebacker who has starred with the Denver Broncos. Third down, 16. I thought I heard a whistle, and it was not a very solid one, and White finally said, well, is it or isn't it? And they may have extended beyond the 30-second time allotment. One of the frustrations that Coach Landry has is when he gets the team at, when he gets the team at one end or, or the other of the field, it takes longer to get those plays in with a messenger system. But he just doesn't trust the signals. He, they were signaled for a while last year. He felt it got them in, in trouble. In fact, it was uh, Coach Makovic on his left. Uh, well, was signaling in the plays last year. Landry said, I'd just rather send them in with the messenger. We're more certain of them that way. Now Pat Donovan, the all-pro left tackle, full start, the first penalty of the game. And now White needs even bigger yardage. Needs a first down out across the 29. The ball's at the seven-yard line. Out of the shotgun. Almost tackled for a safety, you'll recall, in a similar play situation. Here's a screen to Springs. 15, and down he goes. Number 99, Keith Baldwin, and another rookie, Mike Robinson, 92, made the tackle. So the Cowboys have to give up the ball, and Cleveland should get good field position early here in this second quarter. Defensive coordinator Marty Schottenheimer talks to his troops constantly about swarming defense. If you're anywhere on the field, you're expected to be going for that football, and you saw it right there. They really got on top of that screen and shut it down. Walker, a rookie back at the 45-yard line as Danny White will receive the ball right on the goal line. Good driving boot. Walker at the 41. 45 and toppled at the 47. Walker at Nichols State in Louisiana averaged 13 and a half yards every time he touched the ball in his brilliant four years. Good 44-yard punt by Danny White. We still are looking for our first score. 47-yard line. Doug Deacon with that injured right hand is out of the lineup and number 71 Matt Miller has replaced him at left tackle. Miller from the University of Colorado. First down. Stipe has thrown on first down every play in this game. Swings it to Mike Pruitt and the big pullback turns about three yards, crosses midfield. And surrounded by Cowboys, Hegman and Walls. One of the reasons that Coach Ritigliano did not want to have to go to that replacement on the left tackle is that putting a young man like Matt Miller into the game in place of that veteran, Doug Deacon, you almost have to put someone in to help him. Now watch number 82, Ozzie Newsom. Newsom stays. They're stunning on the inside line to try and take advantage of, of the inexperience of number 71, Millen. Newsom, the man who helps to pick up Randy White. Second down, Logan in motion. Six for a first down. Charlie White runs into his own man, Miller, and down he goes at the 45-yard line. Not Miller's fault, the defensive force pushed White back inside, and Miller trying to help him out, knocked him down, a minus six. Watch right now, you'll see the young rookie right here, that Miller, young player, He's going to go to the outside. It's a little screen pass outside. He thinks he's going to get in there and help. He's going outside with Harvey Martin. Ends up knocking. That's concentration. Ends up knocking Charlie White right off the ground. White saying, hey, it's tough enough against those 11 white shirts. I don't need a, a man 270 pounds on my own team to hit. I wonder who they give the credit for the tackle to. <laughs> Second and, or third down and 12 out of the shotgun sight. Deep down the middle, Feacher can't handle it. It's at the 40-yard line. Dennis Thurman, number 32, made the defensive play. Dennis Thurman, the leader of that defensive secondary. He's the man that brings the signals in. 83, Ricky Feacher has really come into his zone with the retirement of Reggie Rucker. Everson Walls, number 24, the man behind him. 
but it's Thurman who read the play from the inside, came across to strip the ball away. Another former Southern California Trojan, and we uh, wish Johnny Robinson well in his new pursuits academically at Southern California, his last game coaching the Trojans on Saturday. Cox's kick to Fellows. Oh, he's a gambler, and down he goes at about the 17-yard line. On all three punt returns, Fellows has been surrounded by Browns. He doesn't fair catch. 40-yard punt, no score here in Irving, Texas. 12 minutes left, first half. A missed 32-yard field goal. Off to begin in Cleveland's end of the field on a fumble. Cleveland wants in Dallas territory interception by Everson Wall. They start at the 17. White to Dorset. Good defensive play by number 56 of the Cleveland Browns, Chip Banks. He forced Dorsett to go wider than he wanted to, and then Lawrence Johnson, 48, came up to make the tackle. Dick, we're seeing, again, a low-scoring game in the early going here. It has to reflect the fact that defenses are traditionally ahead of offenses when you've had a layoff, whether it's at the beginning of training camp or even after a short time off. And of course, we had a long time off during the strike. It's easier to get back and play defense than it is to get the coordination and the timing of offensive patterns. And I was reflected in the first game today. Neither team scored an offensive touchdown. Two field goals aside, Lawrence Taylor's long interception return, the only touchdown of the day. So it's set. 20. Out of bounds at the 25-yard line. A good gain by Dorsett. Short of the first down by a couple. It'll be third down. One of the things that Tom Landry does so well on offense is to employ multiple tight ends. Billy Joe Dupree, number 89, right there. Blocking on Mike Robinson, number 92. Hits him high and then takes his legs out from underneath him. Opens the way for Tony Dorsett to make an excellent gain. And the Cowboys look very explosive. Right? One of the things that I was impressed with watching them practice is what good shape they came back in. You don't see any extra poundage on that Dallas sideline. Third down, yard and a half. Jersey Cleveland players led by Dick Ambrose from the University of Virginia and Marshall Harris from Texas Christian. So the Cowboys stopped on third down. One of the interesting innovations of recent years, the blocking by the tight end coming to the inside. Now watch Doug Cosby, number 84. He's going to come inside almost like a pulling guard. He's going to trap to the inside. Great play here by Banks and Ambrose, 56 and 52. They just set him down. Danny White delivers another solid kick. Dwight Walker, the rookie, gets a good block, fumbles the ball, gets another block, 35, and to the 37. Walker was lucky, an outstanding block. Kept that from being a Dallas fumble recovery, a 44-yard punt, seven-yard return. Have a penalty against Dallas. An eligible man downfield. You saw White, as he often will do, take a couple of extra steps under no rush. And in the meantime, one of the Dallas linemen apparently released. Number 57 on the kicking team downfield illegally. Penalty refused. Angelo King, number 57, the man who got out a little early, but it's hard to blame him when White takes a couple of extra steps. And the Browns will decline the penalty and take the football at their own 37-yard line. 11-10 remaining in the first half. Still a whitewash. Timer. It's been a long time away, so Schottenheimer, even when the play is on, is almost evangelistic in his teaching. He's taking him into the classroom on the sideline. The fine coach. First down, Browns. Scoreless. 11 minutes left, first half, ball, Cleveland 37. Good. And one thing that Cleveland has not been able to do in this first half is run against the Dallas defense, and the Browns are, in this 1982 year, restructuring, trying to run more than pass, but have not been able to move it on the ground. Bob Brunning, number 53, reacting quickly, but it was Randy White, number 54, at the bottom of that stack. And Randy, uh, you'd like to run at him to immobilize him. He's so effective in pursuit. He was, he was not moved out of there at all on that particular play. All 
All-Pro the last four years, Randy White. And the players' terms quite a load at 261. Second and nine. Cleveland has only nine yards rushing. Sight to Charles White, breaking a couple of tackles. And he's to the 49-yard line. A flag is down, however. We'll see if that first down will count. An 11-yard play, most of it on the running of Charles White. But a legal motion against Cleveland will call it back. That, that uh, play would be nullified. Indication of the value of a, a versatile back like Charlie White who can step in there for you, run the football, and also take an opportunity to get out and catch a pass or also to block. Does it all. Does it well. Illegal motion, number 82 offense. Still second down. It's Ozzie Newsom right there. The man that was... Uh, off a little bit early. Unfortunately, nullified the play. So it's second and 14 at the Cleveland 32. And Seif working from the shotgun. Him cupping his hands to his mouth and shouting out an audible. Seif incomplete. Don Smirick was putting pressure on the quarterback and threw it unable to handle the low pass just as well as he was being wrapped up by rookie Monty Hunter, number 34. Big game, Hunter, his nickname from Salem, West Virginia, a school of about 1,000 enrollment. Smirick knows he's going to be working one-on-one -on, -one on Joe DeLamalier, right guard of the Cleveland Browns, because they're having to give help to the other side. Tom DeLeon has to get over there early. Puts a lot of pressure on DeLamalier. Tom DeLeon with that shotgun, and he has had a lot of work with it in game condition for that blind snap to Sipe, and so a lot of pressure on the center of the ground. Got a good job. The Newsom intercepted. Mike down, 35-30, and out of bounds at the 21-yard line. So Sipe has been picked off for the second time. Walls has one, and Downs also a free agent last year. He has his first of the season. Ozzie Newsom, the intended receiver. Newsom shaking his head on the sideline. There he comes right now. Let's follow him all the way across. Downs bumping him. Get a couple of illegal shots. He's only allowed one hit, but the ball under throw. Newsom felt that if he had come in high enough, he could have had it. But great pickoff. Let's watch Sight now. Sight has time to throw the football. Simply did not get it high enough. Did not perhaps read the closing down. They're lucky to get him out of bounds there. Dallas has a shot at it. No score. Ten minutes left in the half. Hill in motion. Take the door set. White. Koski. Fumble. Or is it incomplete? Nope. They call it an incomplete pass as Cosby was drilled by Clinton Burrell, number 49. Burrell taking a good shot. Cosby, number 84. You see him numbered both on the pants and the shirt. He'll catch it going back the other way, just looking for an open spot. But it's Burrell that actually the ball went right through Cosby's hands. Burrell didn't shake it loose. Might have done had Cosby caught that football. Merlin, I'm impressed. And one of the thoughts after the long layoff that the defensive players might uh, ease up a bit. The Browns are really hitting ferocious defensive charges today. White now four for eight. Looks at second and ten. Dorsett. Fifteen and bumped out at the twelve. Just shy of a first down. Again, the Dallas Cowboys taking advantage of the fact that Cleveland had set themselves for a pass play, and it's Dorsett's great acceleration that allows him to get outside, take advantage of those deep drops by corners and, and safeties. It gives him room in the secondary. And Merlin, look who's into that offensive line for Dallas. Number 68, the roll pro guard, Herb Scott, who was injured back early in the year, and the layoff helped him to mend, and of course, a valuable property at guard. He did not expect to be in this game today. I expected Howard Richards to go all the way, but said, if I need to, I can play. I'm ready to go. Scott at left guard. Third down and one. And Dorsett has the first down. It'll be first and goal for the Cowboys, although they're scrambling as if there was a fumble. 
I think they're just fighting for that extra half a yard down there. Well, the Cowboys have a first down right at the 10-yard line. They have the full 10-yard distance to go. There's Herb Scott. You might see a little extra poundage having come off a knee injury. Did not allow him to work out for quite a long period of time. But he always carries his weight in that fashion. He's not one of the more physical appearing Cowboys. And all those baritones do. And he's a lead baritone in this choir. Of his hobby is gospel singing. Dorsett, big hole up the middle, and he has six yards. Cleveland not looking for the run on first down. And Dorsett right behind the blocks of center Tom Rafferty and the guard Scott and Peterson. Jim Cooper, number 61, also doing a good job. A quick look inside. 64, Rafferty, a converted guard, getting his man off with an influence block. And there's the second block right there. Good job inside. And, well, Dorsett doesn't need much room anyway. Watch how quickly he cuts back into the hole here. Sees the opening inside and just keeps his shoulders square. Goes for everything he can pick up. Drew Pearson hustling to the other side of the field to the left. Now he goes off the field. together white able to maintain his composure and come outside and throw an easy touchdown pass to billy joe dupree so seven nothing the dallas cowboys lead with 836 left in the first half step the end to kick it off dino hall and dwight walker are deep for the browns baseball player. He's only 5'7", 165 pounds. Let's pause briefly for station identification. Happy Thanksgiving on this, the NBC television network. This is KYW TV3 in Philadelphia. Cleveland Browns trailing 7-0 here against the Dallas Cowboys. And Doug Deacon is back in the lineup for Cleveland at that left tackle spot. 29-yard line. Cleveland puts it in play. Charles White, short yardage to the 33, covered by Anthony Dickerson. He's not related, at least we asked him yesterday, to the Eric Dickerson, who's the All-American running back with SMU, even though both of them SMU men. Second down, six. tackle for the Cowboys. You know, Jones and Martin, who used to line Jones used to line up uh, left-handed, and uh, Martin right-handed. They've been asked to shift that stance by Tom Landry. Do you think that really makes a difference? 
Well, certainly it gives you some advantages, but uh, moving your stance, I, I have never really understood the philosophy of the Dallas defense in putting the tackles in a four-point stance and forcing you to either play in a right-handed or a left-handed stance. I think doing something like that that's unnatural takes away from the playing ability of the defensive lineman. Third and three. And it's Pruitt. Oh, he bowls for what might be a first down as Randy White had him at about the 36 and Pruitt who carries 225 pounds it appeared on second effort he has the first down just shy of the 40 it is a first down chance to look at Randy White right here in the middle of your screen number 54 Randy of course driving to the outside just bounces off of Jackson's block gets off a second block that's De Leon trying to get him on the second side but that's brilliant second effort by Mike Pruitt, particularly on a worried about his hamstring. He had problems with it, but he's doing a good job of there today. So on first down, good play action. And is it a good catch? Yes, Charles White with a diving catch on the sideline. Anthony Dickerson, the defender. The fans thought that White was out of bounds. Usually when you get a defender right on top of a, a receiver, and there's a question as to whether he was driven out or if he would have landed inbounds. The benefit will go to the receiver. That's a that's a finely thrown pass. Good job. And you'll see contact, bodily contact inbounds. The official right on top of that one. That's a spectacular play for just a three-yard gain as White able to wrap it up. Second and seven. at the 50-yard line. It went right through the hands of the intended receiver, and Brunig said, what's this? A little present. That's the third interception by the Cowboys. Bryant, the uh, Cleveland Browns trying to throw some quick passes in there to take the pressure off the offensive line. And Brian Seip has his third interception of the day, and he said, why in the world didn't you throw it in the right place? behind Mike Pruitt and Bob Brunig with one of his rare interceptions. So the Cowboys have the ball again, leading 7 to nothing. Plus Cowboys, the leaders in the NFL last year with 37 interceptions, have three in this first half today and own the ball at the Cleveland 49, leading 7 nothing. Bob Brunig's eighth interception in his eight years with Dallas. White Man open, but he overshoots Tony Hill of the 49 on the play for Cleveland. Clinton Burrell tackling Hill and drawing some disapproval from the Dallas fans. We talk about the importance of pass protection. Danny White's protection in part is based on the play of Tom Rafferty, number 64 at center. Watch Rafferty here as he locks up with, with Henry Marshall, or with uh, Henry Bradley on the inside. Does a good job of keeping him away from the quarterback. Dorsett, the only man behind White. Looking for Pearson. Good pump fake, and Pearson is all alone. Tom Landry sees the scoreboard light up 13 
as Dallas has violent collision in the middle of the line. Linebackers coming over the top. Ambrose Johnson trying to get a piece of Dorsett. Dorsett actually knocked back, but he was over the goal line. Step the end, kick is through. And with five minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half, Dallas has opened a two-touchdown lead. Their drives have been short from the 20-yard line after the interception by Downs. And now Brunick's interception, 49 yards, took them only a couple of plays, and they now lead 14-0. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. Well, we invite you to stay with us on NBC Sports for an exciting weekend of coverage on Saturday. NBC Sports World keeps you in the holiday spirit with the beauty and the grace of world professional figure skating. Former Olympic greats, gold medalist Dorothy Hamill, Janet Lynn, a bronze medalist, gold medalist Robin Cousins, the photo pop-offs from Russia, they'll be featured in an encore performance from the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. It's an event uh, the whole family will enjoy. This Saturday, 4 o'clock Eastern Time on NBC Sports World. And then on Sunday, we've got a big doubleheader of football on NBC. We'll be talking about that later. White Walker at the 7th, 15, 20, 30, and out to the 33-yard line. And you can see why Walker was so highly regarded by the scouts of the Cleveland Browns. He almost turned that one loose for a long gainer, and a flag is down. Whoops. Cleveland will have it called back. Legal use of the hands. That's a shame because that's the kind of aggressive running and the kind of big play that San Martigliano's Browns need to get back into this game. Dick Bryan Sipe said last week after the game, he said, I'd have booed myself in the first half. I'm afraid that the same is true today. Number 51 on the kicking team, illegal push in the back. Eddie Johnson, number 51, the guilty party on the illegal block, but Sipe has got to get going. Had a much better second half, and Bella Brown's better hope that he can do the same here today. Well, they've had that cardiac kid uh, kind of leadership with the Browns coming from behind in his career. We'll have to do it again today. Just a yard gain for Mike Pruitt. While we have a moment, Sam Reticliano's uh, daughter, Carrie, is in a Cleveland hospital, and we want to wish her well, and that gives us an opportunity to say hello and, and wish all of our friends who are hospitalized or indisposed on this day wish them a speedy recovery and in their own way a happy Thanksgiving second down and nine right in trouble and down he goes at the eight yard line two tall Jones Right into Brian Seif's shoes there. He drops back number 72. Ed Tutal Jones using that tremendous height advantage to reach out and strip the legs out from underneath Brian Seif. Good at number 6'9", 272. And Jones finally last year living up to all his potential. Named to the Pro Bowl. Still credits his professional boxing career, however short lived in 1979, as helping him with his quickness, his agility, in playing this game. From his own end zone, Sipes, third and long. Complete to Charles White, and he's to the 25, short of a first down. Anthony Dickerson saved the first down. His speed as a linebacker, able to get to White. Sipes throwing under pressure. There's this stunt going on on the inside here. Now watch Harvey Martin. He's going to drive to the inside, and they're going to run a stunt behind him. Number 44, or number 54, White coming out to the outside. He'll come in, got free, to unload on Brian Sipe. Sipe's still able to get that football off and into the hands of Charlie White. That's a great camera angle to appreciate how tough it is for that quarterback, and what a perfect throw by Sipe under the worst possible duress. It's a honey. Bellows, that is 27. 35. They have fumbled. It's at the 40, and will this be the break the Browns are looking for with three minutes left in the half? Cowboys have had their turnovers early. The Browns would love to get one of their own just before the half. No signal yet. 
as they're fighting under that pile for possession. You don't come out there. You come out of there reluctantly if you've got a hand on that football, Dick. And it's going to come down to the final wrestle. It's Dallas with the ball. It appeared that Fellows really banged into one of his teammates. That may have precipitated the fumble. Watch him here, number 27, breaking up inside. Bangs right into the back of one of his own players there. Drops that football on the ground. And it, I, I bet it was Fellows who recovered it underneath that stack. So Dallas has the football just inside its 40-yard line with three minutes plus remaining in the half. And the Cowboys with a 14-0 lead in a dominated play. Dorsett is winged way out on the right. Ron Springs, 40. Following his blockers well near a first down at the 49. Ambrose finally tracked him down with help from Henry Bradley, number 91. Springs, of course, does double duty. Very often required to do the blocking for Tony Dorsett on that particular play, given a chance to show us his running skills. Well, we talked about Saturday figure skating, and then on Sunday, doubleheader here on NBC. Those are the early games. The Raiders in Cincinnati will be seen by most of you around the country. And then the second half of the doubleheader, most of it Western action, prime game Denver at San Diego, Kansas City, L.A., Pittsburgh, Seattle. So Sunday, an NFL twin bill here on NBC. Dorsett, first down, and more to the 45 of Cleveland. Dorsett, who does not have a 100-yard day in the first three games of this year, working on a 100-yard half. We've mentioned the fact that Springs normally handles the blocking assignments, and you see him right there throwing the block on the outside on Hanford Dixon, number 29, to Spring Dorsett for the first down. Say Dorsett just 21 yards away from the century mark. First down, Cowboys, Cleveland 44. Heisman Award winner and a brilliant player in the NFL, Dorsett. Pass Dorsett. 40, 30 out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Dorsett. Oh, beautiful timing on that play from White to his running back. Led him with a pass. Tom Cousineau coming hard from the inside. Looked like he had a shot at Dorsett, but Doug Cosby is going to pick him off. Let's see if we can pick it up. This is just a long handoff to Dorsett. Streaking to the outside. Here he comes now. Watch the block right there. You see that block? Bang! And he's got him. Meanwhile, Chip Banks with an acrobatic attempt to try to block the pass, and he too was blocked well as Dorsett gained 16 yards. time so everything breaking right for the Dallas Cowboys the loose balls bouncing in the direction of the white shirts when it appeared that Sam Ratigliano's rounds almost to that ball out in the open the kind you can pick up and run for a score white is going to get hit from the blind side it's the cornerback Hanford Dixon that strips that ball away a chance to be recovered there but the ball was bouncing and the Cowboys get it back Rafferty the quickly on top of it for the Cowboys Two minute timeout. Do you wonder why this game has favored the Cowboys? Look at what they've been able to do with the strength of Tony Orsett's rushing. 114 to 7, 17 yards in the first half. And the Cowboys with a two touchdown lead, but they have needed two pass interceptions, both uh, coming in Cleveland territory. White on second down and 20. In traffic and a sack at the 46-yard line as number 92, Mike Robinson from the University of Arizona, fourth-round pick last year, made the play. He's a native of Cleveland. He's the man that really allowed the Browns to trade off Lyle Alzado. They wanted him to get into the lineup. He's responded with some outstanding play. Coach Ratigliano feels that he's one of the most valuable additions to that Cleveland defense. Clock is running, 140, 139 left. 
first half. Dallas will take its time with third down and long. Drew Pearson wide left. Crosby left. Hill right. Out of the shotgun. Deep down the middle to Pearson. And he has it at the 24. That'll be short of the first down. Clarence Scott made the tackle. And on fourth down, here's Raphael Septien will come in for a field goal try. Drew Pearson isolated on the far side. Just drives to the inside. This is the kind of pattern that Danny White likes. He puts it on the money. They try to shake it loose, but the veteran hangs on. Pulls it down. Cleveland calling timeout here. Wanting to preserve as much on the clock as they can. Certainly looking probably at trying to block this field goal to begin with. Another fine story is Pearson, who was a free agent pick. He was, uh, Pearson was a quarterback in high school in New Jersey. Joe Theismann was the quarterback before him at that same high school. Theismann now with the Redskins at 3-0. Pearson went to Tulsa, made him into a receiver, drafted as a free agent, and all he is now is the all-time Dallas number one receiver with 429 receptions. 22 yards on that last play that gives Septien more room for the field goal. Talking about Pearson, I have to tell you that having played against him a number of times, I watched him catch some passes that I did not ever believe he would get his hands on and <laughs> felt the pain of that inside of me. He always played extremely well against us and has had a tremendous career here in Dallas. And another good statistic for men who have thrown the ball more than twice in the NFL, he has the best completion percentage. He is 5 for 5 and 3, three touchdowns. touchdowns. <laughs> That's not a bad average. <laughs> It'll be a 41-yard attempt. He missed one earlier from 32. Not this time. Right down the middle. And Dallas now leads by 17. Tom Landry, of course, prepares his team thoroughly. They're a highly disciplined, disciplined team, a veteran team. And they figured to come back out of this strike delay probably with greater ease than perhaps any other team in the NFL. They've also been favored by the schedule. Two home games and then a 10-day layoff. A 10-day layoff, he'll use it as a mini camp to get his troops ready. Now, Septien, that's officially a 40-yard field goal. He, he has that uh, macaw that he calls... Uh, after his own initials, JR, not for the Dallas character, but for Jose Rafael as in Septien. He said, how's the, how's the McCaw doing in a year? Learned any more uh, new words? He says, no. He says, all I can say is hello, and it's learned how to bark. <laughs> he says, I've got four dogs. He said, I've got a dumb McCaw and four dogs. Here comes Walker, the rookie at the 20. Now you can slow down and pick your spots maybe in college, but you can't give up that much time against a good Dallas rush. So Cleveland trailing, and you see Len Berman, Mike Adamley, getting ready for NFL 82. They'll have highlights of the first game, and we're talking about the first 30 minutes of this one at halftime. And congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Len Berman on the arrival of their third child, uh, daughter, in the last couple of weeks. Couple of sons, that does make this Thanksgiving special. Now Cleveland with 49 seconds left in the half and trailing by 17 and Sipe out of the shotgun, so they're going to go for it. That's Dino Hall to the 34 yard line, and the clock is running. Matt Miller again in the game, it would appear that Doug Deacon is only able to tolerate the use of that hand limited. Bounce of time. He's already series with the youngster. Sipe incomplete to Hall, who was open at the 45 yard line. That stops the clock with 24 seconds. The Browns have two timeouts remaining in this half. One of the interesting questions to ask if Brian Sipe does not get things going any better, will we see Paul McDonald? Sam Ritigliano uh, quoted many times early in this season as saying he felt that he had two starting quarterbacks. McDonald has sat by quietly uh, waiting his turn. It may be coming up. 
Seifel came into this game hitting on only 45.8% of his passes. That's uh, way below, 10% below what he wants. He's 11 for 18 today, but three interceptions. Second and 10. No one open, so he has to duck out of bounds at the 38-yard line and stops the clock with 16 seconds remaining. Well, that's the kind of play with that much time. You hope if you're a Cleveland Brown fan that someone can work open, but that Dallas defense, too tough. I think Seif also felt the breath on the back of his neck. Don Smerick, number 60, bearing down on him as he won out of bounds. Merlin, in your day, they started with a fifth defensive back, and because of five called at the nickel, and then they went to six at dime. Well, D Dallas is using seven defensive backs at the moment. I don't know what their terminology is, but maybe that's a quarter. <laughs> in place, it may be even a dollar. I don't know about that. Dollar <laughs> Third down and six with 16 seconds. Good stop by Sight. And Randy White throws him down at the 32. Third sack for the Cowboys, who had seven coming into this game. White again showing you why the Cleveland defense suit backs. I think that's really important is because of the expanded rosters. You can afford to keep extra people. It used to be that if you only had 38, 39, 40 players, you could not keep enough defensive backs to put seven in the game. But of course, with a 49-man roster as we have now, you can keep a lot of specialists around. Dallas, noting that Cleveland was just going to let that clock run out to end the half, stops it with a timeout at seven seconds just to get a chance for a return, a good return, and a quick field goal try, and they could add to their 17-0 lead. Cox and the Cleveland punting team have had a little bit of difficulty getting the football off. Perhaps Dallas wants a chance to block this kick. You look at those numbers above Tom Landry. Well, you don't see them now, but... 007, and in some ways he's been a James Bond as he survived a lot of prevail as a head coach in the early years and now in his 23rd season, the third winningest coach in NFL history. They're going to put on a 10-man rush. And Cox gets it away. No one back for Dallas. Clock running out. That'll be the end of the first half as soon as the ball is whistled dead. And there it is. So the Dallas Cowboys, opportunistic, using two pass interceptions deep in Cleveland territory, and Tom Landry's team, with two wins and a loss, owns a sizable 17-0 lead. No question they came back into this game with much more concentration and discipline than did the Cleveland Browns. And, of course, the advantage of that home field. We'll check with the guys on NFL 82 right after this word. Two right after this word. Set had a bad toe and didn't practice it but one day before this game. Now well, certainly his running dominated the first half and the rushing of the Dallas Cowboys allowed them to dominate not only the play on the field but also the scoreboard. All right, Merlin, let's take a look at the official first half statistics and uh, point out what catches your eye. The thing that uh, you look at most quickly there, the rushing yardage, 114 yards to 21 yards. That, uh, that in and of itself is enough to give you domination of the first half. The uh, passing yardage also very one-sided for the Dallas Cowboys, as would be then the total yardage. The turnovers, three turnovers for the Browns, only one for the Dallas Cowboys. And a 3-2 to two advantage in possession time also for the Cowboys. The Browns, trailing 17-0, will get the ball first as Septien kicks it off. And White Walker at the four. Bad start. Breaks it out to the 25 to 30. And the last man, Everson Wall, saves a touchdown. So that does happen too. You fumble and that draws everyone in. And once you break through that first front wall, you might go a long distance. And Walker turned a mistake into a good kickoff return. Some of the most exciting kick returns that I've ever seen have come off plays exactly like this. All of the defenders end up in the same place. And if you can break that initial wall, as you said, Dick, you have a chance. Dennis Thurman, number two, 32, one man that missed him. Septian didn't get a chance there, but Everson Walls using his great speed to pull down Walker. The veteran, Brian Seif, is a quarterback. First down at the 38, Mike Pruitt. We're about four straight ahead. Pruitt, an All-American at Purdue, and following in that great tradition of Cleveland Brown running backs, Jim Brown and Leroy Kelly and Greg Pruitt and now Mike, all 1,000-yard 
rushers. Brian Seif with White, Charles White, and Mike Pruitt behind him. The receivers, Logan and Feature on the outside with a tight end, Ozzie Newsom. Doug Deacon back in there along with Jackson, DeLeon, the Lamalure, and Rison from ball. Second down four at the 42. Barnes on a blitz. Incomplete. Barnes was coming, and so was Mike Hegman, and Hegman got there first. Someone had to pick up Barnes, and that left Hegman free as they loaded up two men coming from that defensive right side. First down, Petty. Browns, and they don't like to keep their backs in the secondary. In this particular case, they did keep Pruitt in. Simply could not handle all the people coming, and Sipe paid the price for that. And although Brian Sipe is back in the game, Paul McDonald is down along the sideline warming up. There's the left-hander from Southern California, McDonald, the second string quarterback for Cleveland. It's third and six. Good protection this time for Sipe. And he can't find Logan at the Cowboy 44. Good coverage from Everson Wolves. So Cleveland's first attempt. No first down, and Steve Cox will punt it away to Dallas. If you have not been with uh, Thanksgiving football coverage earlier today in Pontiac Silverdome, the New York Giants defeated the Detroit Lions 13-6. No offensive touchdowns. The winning score, a 97-yard interception return by the sensational linebacker of the Giants, Lawrence Taylor. Cox with a perfect spiral. Fellows at his nine. And he's down at the 14, maybe the 15 yard line as Kevin Turner, number 59 linebacker for Cleveland, made the tackle on the special teams. Good kick by Cox, 42 yards. Danny White, the quarterback, brings in the Dallas offense. And when you think Dallas offense, you think Tony Dorsett. Dorsett with a big first half, 79 yards. Ron Springs with over 30 yards, had more rushing than the entire Cleveland team. Hill and Pearson on the outside. Doug Cosby, a touchdown catch in the first half. Pat Donovan, Richards, Rafferty, Peterson, and Cooper on the line for Dallas. Pearson to the left with Hill slotted left. Winged left is Springs, and now it's Dorsett who wings out the other way. to the 22-yard line before Ambrose can bring him down. On first down, the Cowboys get seven. Harris, Bradley, and Robinson. Relatively young front three with Banks, Cousineau, Ambrose, and Cowboys. The injured Matthews, Clay Matthews, has broken ankle. Johnson and Dixon at the corners. Burrell and Scott are the safeties. 17-0, Dallas. The comfort of that sizable lead as we start the second half, their first possession. On the blitz, and they pick it up well, the Cowboys, and going long for Hill. He's got it at the 30-yard line. And whistled that Hill just in case will take it in. Hill between two Cleveland Browns showing his athletic leaping talent. It looked like there was going to be a chance for the defenders to jump up and bat that ball away. And for Dixon, looked like he was gathering position. You'll see him, number 29. He was the man initially responsible for Hill. But the other cornerback, Lawrence Johnson, also in on the play. Let's look at it from behind Danny White. Now watch it as the ball is thrown. You'll see that the two defenders are closing quickly on Hill. It looks like they're in position to knock the ball away. They end up knocking each other down, and they're very lucky that Lawrence Johnson ended up on the heels of Hill, or he would have gone off for a touchdown. 47 yards and a first down at the Cleveland 30, and White swings it out to Dorsett. And he is to the 20-yard line and what appears to be close to another first down. Rose made the tackle. One of the obvious advantages that the Dallas Cowboys appear to have in this game is that they seem to have maintained their discipline and their conditioning better than the Cleveland Browns. I think perhaps in a way that's 
the kind of system they have, Dick. Tom Landry and his staff, very, very disciplined. Most of these Dallas players stayed close by. Most worked out regularly, lifting weights, working together, and it didn't take them long to get back into the pattern of the season. Landry's Cowboys with a first down at the 20-yard line. Dallas with a relatively easy schedule the rest of the way, and the Browns have a murderous lineup of games to follow this one. Leading 17-0, first down at the first. set and he is to the 13 seven more yards and there again the value of the wide receivers for the Cowboys they block and Tony Hill freed Dorsett for extra yardage excellent block by number 80 Tony Hill just waiting out there it was almost a, almost the kind of play you see in basketball now Hill has gone down Dorsett he's a blocker now watch him just wait and he just he nails him coming from the inside. That's that's the kind of pick you run in the NBA, in the Dick. Indeed, and of course he gave the look of going down, so he drew the attention of the cornerback, and then uh, wheels and picks off the linebacker. Second down, three. Or set 14 yards from 100. He wings out to the right. Spring. First down to the nine. Henry Bradley from behind finally threw his 260 pounds on him and had help from Mike Robinson. Not that it's tough enough today on Thanksgiving for the Cleveland Browns. Well, the Cowboys have the freer trip, although Washington unbeaten at Houston, New Orleans, Philadelphia, Minnesota, and that's no mark against those teams. But will you compare that schedule against the Cleveland schedule, which we'll show after the next play, there is a sizable difference, a marked difference. Second, check that first and goal now. Dallas at the eight-yard line. 11 minutes left in the third quarter. They go with two tight ends. Too much time. That'll cost the Cowboys five on delay of the game. So while they mark off the five yards, let's go to the Cleveland Browns schedule as referee Gene Barth with that signal for taking more than the 30 seconds. Tigliano's Browns need more than that. It's a very important contest today. There, the remaining schedule for Cleveland. San Diego, hungry for a win themselves. They're one and two going into Sunday's play. Then at Cincinnati against the AFC champs. Then at home against the Steelers unbeaten. Then to Houston. And then they have to go, to, the last game is at Pittsburgh. So <laughs> the Browns have their job well defined. It's going to be tough. goal from the 13. Way over the head of Dorsett, who was well covered by 55 Curtis Weathers. I think Danny White simply decided that the better move there was to fire it out of bounds. That makeup game, by the way, Ritigliano, Coach Ritigliano said he was hoping for Northwestern after looking at the games they had. He said maybe... <laughs> Of course, there's an interesting story out of the playoff meetings or out of the competition meetings that Art Modell claimed that he got up, went to the restroom. When he came back, they decided who Cleveland was going to play. He said, in case of a, a weak bladder, making for a tough schedule. <laughs> Whatever correlation might be there, but he'll learn to hold out a little longer next time. Second and goal. Tony Hill at the two-yard line, and the catch is allowed. It'll be third and goal. An all-out blitz coming from the Cleveland Browns. White able to stand in long enough to get the ball to Tony Hill. Hill will start inside, freeze the defensive back long enough to get the ball in the air, and then maintain his control inside that sideline. Takes it out of bounds. Lawrence Johnson, number 48, the man over there to defend for... The Cleveland Browns, but not there in time. By Merlin, this is a big play. Cleveland, if they can hold the Cowboys, keep the game within three touchdowns, but a Dallas touchdown would just about signal an impossible comeback for the Browns. So third and goal at the two. Very important play for the Browns' defense. Take the door set. Wide open is Springs for the touchdown. The 
Cowboys actually bring in an extra offensive lineman. Move Donovan out to play tight end. They end up with three tight ends, and it's really a running situation. And that's what Cleveland was playing. Crossed up in that particular situation as Springs just loops to the outside and takes the easy pass. Watch it quickly here. Cosby 84 at the slot, and Springs sliding outside all by himself. Picks up the easy touchdown. Clarence Scott, number 22, played cornerback and strong safety, his first year at free safety, and he went for the run. Step the end, adds the extra point, and with 10 minutes and 26 seconds left in the third quarter, it's the Dallas Cowboys who are enjoying this Thanksgiving Day by 24. Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. And by Black & Decker's Workmate. When you've got a tough job to handle, it's like having an extra pair of hands. So Dallas scores on its first possession in the second half to build its lead to 24-0. Walker and Hall deep, step the end sidewinder to Hall at the five. 15-20. Trying to squirt three, but can't at the 24-yard line. So Cleveland begins again deep in its own end, and Brian Seif will come in as the quarterback for the Browns. 85 yards in eight plays. The key was the 47-yard pass deep down the middle to Tony Hill from Danny White. Three and a half minutes for the score. Ron Springs with a capper on the two-yard pass. Feature and Logan both to the left. Tight end Newsom split right. Wood and Charles White behind sight. Draw play, Pruitt has some running room. 30, 40, and a first down. And Pruitt, with all that size, can still run a 4-4, so you get him in the open, and he can rumble almost. Went the distance on that one. Michael Downs is able to make the saving tackle. A very lonely Paul McDonald, number 16, on the sideline, and Interesting decision from Artigliano to keep Sipe in the game. Sipe uh, obviously needs some big plays to get him going here. Intercepted for a moment by Walls and then dropped. And Walls again. He always seems to be in the right spot. A great nose for the ball. Reminds me of Jamal Wilkes, the former UCLA All-American who plays with the L.A. Lakers. No matter where that ball is, Wilkes seems to almost know in advance, and so it is with this young Walls who played at Grambling. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KYW-TV3 in Philadelphia. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olson, Irving, Texas. Texas Stadium, Dallas Cowboys, 10-3-1 on Thanksgiving. Trying to add another victory, heading 24-0 lead early in the third quarter. Second and 10 play for Brian Seif for the Cleveland Browns. And he can't get away from Don Smirick. Great name for a defensive lineman, Smirick, and he just did. He certainly did. A stun on the left side of that line. Ed Tutal Jones coming inside. Smirik breaking outside behind him. Sipe forced to run with that football. Could not get away from Smirik, who, who showed excellent speed on that play, Dick. He actually outran Sipe. He just couldn't pull away from him. 11-yard loss to the 29. Dallas defense now has gone over six quarters without allowing a touchdown. Three field goals last week as they beat Tampa Bay. Flag down and some early movement in that line. The game after Thanksgiving, the Cowboys have not lost the last 12 years after Thanksgiving. And the 13 and 1 total in the previous 14. Danny White, 12 for 18 passing, one yard short of 200. Stays on the ground, the door step. All the way to the 38-yard line, a gain of nine. That'll put him close to 100. Tony Dorsett. Dorsett dominating play here in this game. In that particular play, as well as in earlier plays, and proving again the wisdom of Tom Landry's building an offense around him. This is play from earlier in the game. Dorsett breaking outside. You see the speed outside, the acceleration. Driving up toward the goal line there. That's the kind of plays he's made all day long. Second down and one. 
Jones and strings. 45 50. He has a first down at the Cleveland 46 yard line before Hanford Dixon can make the tackle. 17 yards for Ron Springs. Dorsett also able to use to be used as a decoy to make room for Ron Springs. Let's continue with some of those earlier plays from the game as you get a feeling for the dominance of the running game of the Dallas Cowboys and Tony Dorsett here through this the early going. It's one of the big plays off the left side of that line. Dorsett really putting on a show here and again reminding you that he came into this game with an injury to his toe not expected to be able to play effectively in this game. Danny White with all kinds of time. And it's off the fingertips of Billy Joe Dupree down at the 32-yard line. Now, Merlin, the thing about Dorsett, when he first came into the National Football League, everyone accepted the fact he had just blazing speed and great acceleration and moves, but he looked as if that he might be, not be able to take the pounding. And as he has stayed in the league now in his sixth year, he's added muscle and weight. He now carries 192 pounds. And when you see him in the dressing room with, without those pads on, he is just a, it looks like a piece of sculpture. He also has accepted the discipline and the team role that Tom Landry cut out for him. And he's done that most effectively. Second and 10 from the 46, Dorsett. Oh, what a move. And he's to the 35-yard line, a first down, and he's over 100 yards today. That's a dip that we often saw O.J. Simpson make. We watch it at the end of this, or toward the end of this run. Chance to get a little bit of vintage move here. He starts to the right, cuts back to the inside, driving aggressively right there. Whoa, <laughs> there it was. Just a beautiful little shuffle step almost. And he just broke for the extra yardage. Like I said, that's something that O.J. Simpson used to do beautifully. And when he gets 100, the Cowboys invariably are winners. Ron Spring with a tough battle to get to the 33-yard line and a gain of two. Meanwhile, the crowd, while it makes noise, is the smallest home crowd here in Texas in eight years. 46,267, the actual attendance, 17,000 no-shows. 17,256, it is the holiday, some would stay home, but we've been here on Thanksgivings before, never seen quite so many blue seats, the empties. Smallest crowd since 1974 here at Texas Stadium. White on second and eight. Drew Pearson, first down at the 17-yard line. And with the running of Dorsey and the pinpoint passing of White, it's a frustrated defense for Cleveland. Drew Pearson showing you that great control on that particular pass and concentration that receivers must have if they're going to approach an all-pro status. Hill taking a vicious shot after he caught that football, still hanging on to the ball without any problem. Drew Pearson, the all-time receiver for the Cowboys. To the right, Tony Hill, the left. Only springs behind White on first down. Leading 24 to nothing, midway through the third quarter. Springs just rumbling Ooh. almost at will to the 10-yard line before Robinson can weight him down with help from Eddie Johnson, number 51. One of the things you're impressed by as you have a chance to watch that Dallas Cowboy team in their practices and in their weight drills is the physical strength. I think that as a team, they are probably the most physically strong team in the NFL. And what was that that Landry said to you as he observed his team after the eight-week layoff? He said, I can hardly tell the difference in, in what they're able to do in this practice. The only thing would be a little bit of, of endurance. But he said, as far as being able to handle everything, they can do it. Here's a man who certainly can, Dorsett, who has five more yards. It's first and goal for the Cowboys at the five-yard line. Dick, I would think that there are other units, the offensive line in Pittsburgh, for example, that could challenge the offensive line here for physical strength. But I don't think there's another team in the league that pays as much detailed attention to, to a strength program as they do here in Dallas. And I think part of that because of Bob Ward, their strength coach, who is uh, really a almost a, a missionary for this uh, the importance of, of strength of physical strength to the football player 
There's a sign in the Dallas locker room that reads, the quality that man's life is in direct proportion to his commitment to excellence. And that certainly is reflected of the attitude of this entire organization. It starts at the top. Dorsett gets away from two men and scores! Dorsett had done thus far in the game. Well, he he added substantially to that on that particular drive and saved the best for last, much to the chagrin of that man, Sam Matigliano. Kept the end out of Carano's hold. Adds the extra point. Nine plays, 71 yards, and the Cowboys really move the ball at will on that drive. It appeared that there might have been a chance for Cleveland to stop Dorsett. Watch it yourselves as he drives to the outside between, behind number 70, Howard Richards. 49, Burrell, the first man to miss him. Dorsett just waves another defender aside and plunges into the end zone. So with 3.32 left in the third quarter, Dallas big by 31. This buds for that first day on the job. Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. The Mercedes-Benz dynasty of three-liter automobiles. World champion race cars. Classic sports cars. Elegant personal cars. Now, Mercedes-Benz gives you three-liter performance in this car. The 300D turbo diesel sedan. Three liters of power so far beyond the ordinary that it outperforms every other diesel in America, if not the world. The 300D turbo diesel. The dynasty lives on. The greatest names in the history of figure skating. The dazzling Olympic and world champion John Curry. Olympic great Linda Fratiani. The graceful Dorothy Hamill. And the marvelous Janet Lynn. A special encore performance on NBC Sports World. Saturday. Tom Landry. Not too far from his 199th win. Number three all time. And just a game or two ahead of Don Shula. And their active rivalry. Dino Hall at the six yard line. The shortest man on the field takes it out to the 23, and we have a flag down on the return. Probably against the Browns, unfortunately, it is. It's going to be an illegal block. So move them back even deeper. It would appear that we're going to get Paul McDonald, number 16, into the game. That's John Makovic in the blue jacket. He was the former head coach at Wake Forest and one of the offensive assistants of Landry. And another mark of a secure man, Landry, is the fact he has no less than five assistants who have been a head coach, two of them, in the NFL, Dick Nolan and Neil Armstrong. Uh, one of the... Number 23, illegal block in the back. First down. Obviously, one of the, the uh, important assets that Landry has is a very strong staff. We could turn this quickly into a, a Dallas Cowboy commercial, but they have proved over the years that they have the most consistent winning organization around. From the 13, then, McDonald, the new quarterback, Mike Pruitt. Despite the score, 31-0, Pruitt certainly giving it uh, second effort and dragging tacklers out to the 20-yard line. Michael Downs, Dennis Thurman, and others. Brian Seip, uh, a tough day. It's been not a good return for Seip, who came in with 45% completions and went 11 for 23. Average of less than eight yards a completion and had three intercepted. And wrong to blame, of course, all of that on the quarterback. But the quarterback does have to stand up and uh, look at those numbers and accept more than any other player for the failure or the success. 
close to a first down goes Charles White. Don Smirick, who played his college ball at Nevada Reno, made the tackle. 2.30 left in the third quarter. First down for Cleveland. Well, how about that? I think it's nice that the Cowboys recognize a friend. Father Goodfather himself uh, will be back on Tuesday night to, to say hello to everyone. Well, it's uh, Tuesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time for Father Murphy. And I know that uh, you've been excited about the scripts and uh, the continuing uh, good support that you get. We've got some good shows coming for the folks at home, and uh, since there are so many families out there watching us today, I'd like to encourage them to pull up a chair on Tuesday night and enjoy some Father Murphy with us on NBC. Charles White tackled at the 34. It's another Cleveland first down. This is a time where that Dallas defense will give the short yards, protecting against the quick score as well they can afford, leading 31-0. And Tony Dorsett has been brilliant today. McDonald. Complete to Ricky Feature at the 43-yard line. On the sideline, a man who has played a role in the fortunes of both these teams, Calvin Hill. For many years, a great running back for the Cowboys. Ended his career in Cleveland and is now working for the Cleveland organization. Graduate of Yale University, and uh, Dallas has drafted another man out of Yale, a second-round pick, Jeff Rohr, this year. A linebacker, too. success that Hill offered when he came here back in the 60s. Nice throw by McDonald, and he finds Charles White, who was his teammate at the University of Southern California in the collegiate days, and that'll be just shy of a first down. McDonald went to the same high school and the same university as Pat Hayden. Left-handed thrower certainly has proven effective and anxious to play football. He's talking to Coach Hackett, who coached him at SC and is now the quarterback coach for the Browns. He said he wants to get in the football game, but he's a quality young man. He has not made an awful lot of noise. These are his first passes of this season. Charles White looking for a block, gets to the Dallas 47, and the flag goes down. We may have a face mask. Six-yard gain. It's the other way. It's holding against Cleveland. So things not breaking well for the Browns. Perhaps we'll get a chance to see it on the outside here. Check on it for you. As White drives to the outside. It's 43 Pruitt leading him. Fortunately, probably right there. It looked like Pruitt had a hold of had a hold of him to the back side, somewhere in that stack right there. Holding call moves the ball back. The first and 15. 43 offense holding, still first down. You can see Pruitt had his right arm draped over Barnes. Number 31 dragged him down. So back to the 41 yard line on a 10 yard penalty. I'm out. First to 15. There must have been a couple of extra yards. Look, too many, too many Cowboys on the field. How many they got out there? Two, four, <laughs> six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 14 of them. I don't think that's fair, Dick. <laughs> Ritigliano might suggest that they tried with 10 to even things up. Ernie Stotner, the man on the right side, one of the all-time great defensive linemen, played for the Pittsburgh Steelers, the defensive coordinator of these Dallas Cowboys, and a man healthily responsible for the success they've enjoyed over these past seasons. This is our deluxe model. Triple track, two storm. There are certain things you've always wanted, but for some reason you just never got them. Like the Black & Decker Workmate. So I caught this baby on 50 pound test. It's not like you can't afford it, but somehow you never got around to getting one. So she did three spades, so I did three no trumps. So next time you see a Workmate, instead of just longing for one, why not stop in and get it? So I The Workmate Work Center. It's time you got one. The last time in television had a $50 rebate, I refused to do it. And now they're trying to persuade me to do another one. Well, perhaps I was a bit hasty. After all, in television is a marvelous system, and $50 is a big rebate. So buy it in television before November 28th and get $50 back from Mattel Electronics. And hurry. $50 rebate offer ends November 28th from Bowling Green State University. They have the same colors as the Cleveland Browns and 
That's a rare sign in the home of the Cowboys. And certainly that's been the case today. Nobody beating Dallas. As the Cowboy defense has now held the opposition scoreless, touchdown scoreless in nine consecutive quarters. Threw it on a quick hitter. And the big pullback gets to the Dallas 49-yard line. That'll bring up second down and about six. I'd like to go back to that comment of Tom Landry's, or at least the locker room wall sign, the quality of a man's life is in direct proportion to his commitment to excellence. And he could wear that on his back, couldn't he? He certainly could, and I've always believed, Dick, that teams tend to mold themselves in the shape of their leaders. True in the way the Dallas Cowboys have emulated the discipline and the integrity and the devotion to excellence of Tom Landry. And there's the man number 54, excellence personified. Randy White stayed at home and dragged down Pruitt at the 54-yard loss. We have given Randy White a few pats on the back today, and you'll see why right here. Head-to-head -head with Robert Jackson just knocks Jackson backwards and gathers up Pruitt in the backfield. That's just, that's the manster at his best. And that is the end of the third quarter here at Irving, Texas. The score, Dallas 31, Cleveland nothing. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Have a beautiful Thanksgiving, and remember, there's always something to be thankful for. Tonight, celebrate Thanksgiving with fame. Then, you bugger. as Sam finally met his match, cheers. And Tony joins his dad in the Merchant Marine. Taxes. <laughs> then Carrillo's ex-wife is jailed. You can stay in here until you rot. Hill Street Blues tonight. Hey, it's the best night of television on television. Bundling up is their solution to our cold room problem. This is mine. A portable soft heat unit. Clean, comfortable, hot water heat. Soft heat sends warm air up to mix with the cold, using natural air currents to warm the whole room evenly. With soft heat, you don't have to overheat the house to solve a... We go to the fourth quarter. Dick Hendrick with Merlin Olsen. The score, Dallas 31, Cleveland nothing after three periods. There are the official statistics, and they reflect exactly why Dallas has dominated the game. Paul McDonald on the 50-yard line, third and seven to open this final period. Out of the shotgun. A nice pump. And Feature can't get to the ball at the 30. Well covered by Ron Fellows. Feature just couldn't get himself around the Dallas defender. A very interesting play by the Dallas Cowboys. The blitz coming. They actually had Randy White dropping back in coverage on that particular play. Let's look at it quickly. You'll have a chance to see it. White drawing a block and then moving back, allowing the linebackers to clear to the inside. And finally coming forward when the ball thrown, Thurman and Hunter, the two blitzers, driving to the inside. Fourth and seven. Let's see if this is the time for the fake punt from midfield. Nope. Fellows at the 13. And he's out to about the 23-yard line. University of Missouri's leading receiver is a senior. And Converted into a defensive back by the Cowboys and a fine return man. We'll be right back in Irving, Texas. 37, he's the people's choice here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. <laughs> 14 yards. At the other end of that run, fine tackle by Tom Cousineau. Newhouse. One carry last week for a touchdown. Very important play as the Cowboys squeaked one by against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Let's take a quick look at number 50, Tom Cousineau, jumping night nicely over the block there and getting downfield. But Newhouse dragging him along. He bounced along there for a little bit, showing you the power of the drive of Robert Newhouse. First down, and White going for the bomb. Defensive coverage by Hanford Dixon on Tony Hill as Dixon had to be tempted to turn earlier but did not and timed his move perfectly, avoided the flag, and broke up the play. One of the things that Tony Hill brings to this game is great speed and acceleration, and Dixon showing some of the same. Some of the fans here feeling that 
Tony may have been bumped early. You see a little bit of bumping going on, but Dixon has a right to go for that football. He definitely had his eye on it in the last surge of that particular play. He was the number one draft pick out of Southern Mississippi last year. Second and ten. Now the Cowboys leading 31 nothing and going for the bomb. Newhouse. And he's hit hard at the 40 yard line by Scott Nicholas. He's a 12th round draft pick from Miami of Florida. Dick Ambrose also in on the play 52. Newhouse now in his 11th year with the Cowboys. He is their player rep. He goes out and Newsom comes in. And Cousineau doing a little work on that right side. He was hit by his own team. Made that tackle a couple plays to go. One of the things that happens when you get behind like this, you tend to get more people hurt. And certainly that's something that the Browns don't need with as tough a schedule as they have. White with a lot of room to run. 40, 50, and out of bounds at the 45 of Cleveland. Fifteen yards on that scramble by Danny White showed some good speed. Lawrence Johnson, number 48, defending downfield man to man, had his back to Danny White and didn't see until the last minute that it was indeed a scramble. You'll maybe have a chance to see that at the lower end of your screen. Elvis Franks getting the rush to the outside. Danny sees some room inside now. Now watch right at the end of the rush here. Oh, there he, he turned around by the time Lawrence Johnson, number 48, did turn around finally, but not until White was almost up to him in the open field. Timmy Newsom with his first carry. And the 231 pounder who played his college ball at Winston Salem State has sizable yardage before Clarence Scott can bump him out of bounds. Dick, I think this is the kind of game that for Sam Ritigliano and the Cleveland Browns, you just you file it. You put it away and forget about it. Uh, they've got 10 days to get themselves ready for uh, for their next opponent. 10 days to get themselves uh, back up on par. And there's no question that uh, this is the kind of game that can can only be set aside because they have not played the kind of football they had hoped to play here and certainly have evened their schedule out in a very unpleasant way. Newhouse on a quick hitter. Look at him fight. You think the score was tied the way he ripped away from that tackler to the 29 yard line. Robert Newhouse. I tackled him a few times. I like tackling a bowling ball. Just tremendous strength and energy. Huge thighs. Look at him drive there. He doesn't want to go to the ground. Giving the fans a little extra thrill here. His thighs are so big that although he has a 31 inch waist he buys 36 inch pants just to get them around his thighs and then alters the waist. Gets one big back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, they corralled him that time. They ganged up, did the Browns, with Scott coming up from the secondary to help out Henry Bradley and Chip Banks. Sam Ritigliano, and if any man can lead and rally his troops, Ritigliano with his attitude can. And he did something interesting in the preseason before the very first game last summer against the Lions. He took the entire team down, didn't tell them, got them all on the bus, took them to a local theater to see Rocky III. And his pitch was, you know, we've been up, we've been down like Rocky, and now we got to come back after an 11-5 year, and then last year 5-11. and and maybe there's a message in all this. So after the film, he got up on stage in the movie house and gave his pep talk to his team. White. Intercepted. Lawrence Johnson has his third interception of the year. The only three the Browns own. And that time, White, unhappy with himself, threw uh, off the wrong foot and the pass died. White's sixth interception of the year, and early on, Danny had some problems with sacks and interceptions, but he's had a fine day today, having an opportunity to put the ball in the end zone many times. Doug Cosby going downfield, breaking across the middle. The ball probably should have been eaten as Lawrence Johnson got himself in perfect position to take that one away from Doug Cosby. Canon's AE1 program is impressing a lot of people. 
For the pro photographer, it's even more advanced. And for pro quarterback Joe Theismann, it's even simpler to use. Hey, no matter how tough the shot, the program mode automatically sets the camera for the best possible photo. <laughs> this Canon is super. The Canon AE-1 program. So advanced, it's simple. Canon, the photographic consultant to the National Football League. Introducing the anti-shock sticker. Instead of shock, this sticker surprises you pleasantly because at $49.95 base sticker price, Colt Hatchback, imported only for Dodge and Plymouth, is one phenomenal value. With a peppy MCA jet engine, room for five, front wheel drive, and high mileage, Colt's the right combination of size, style, and performance. And the anti-shock sticker, only on Colt. Now, 10.9% annual percentage rate financing on all new 82 imports. See participating Dodge and Plymouth dealers for details. 1982 National Football League game is being brought to you by Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob. Some things speak for themselves. By the new Chrysler Corporation, quality engineered to be the best. And by Canon, so advanced, Canon is the world's leader in 35-millimeter photography. Cleveland Browns with the third year with the Browns. And Logan in motion. Trailing 31-0. Pruitt gets only three. Bob Brunig played at Arizona State. He and Danny White, both the uh, ex-Sun Devils. And, of course, they'll be rooting for their alma mater against Arizona this weekend. If Arizona State wins, you'll see them in the Rose Bowl here on NBC January 1. Michigan is shoring itself a position. There's Danny White, who was also a fine baseball player there. Same team with Craig Swan and... Bump Wills. McDonald. Beautiful throw to Ricky Feature and a first down at the 37-yard line. That's really threading it through the defense. Right over the outstretched arms of the defenders, and he put a little zip on that one. Harvey Martin getting a little pressure on him from the outside. 24 first downs for the Cowboys, and it's really been their night. You'll see McDonald getting the pressure. Harvey coming from the left side right there. McDonald able to get that ball off and beautifully on target. McDonald has a man and Charles White backpedaling. And the crowd, you can hear their reaction. Everyone's saying, hey, I could have caught that one, but they didn't know there were a lot of Cowboys around either. And Charles White feeling badly as he heads back to the huddle. Tom Landry, his thoughts about the new Super Bowl 16 team tournament. Playoff. Because I believe that by putting 16 teams into the playoffs at the end, you're going to have every team in the National Football League playing excellent football by then. And when they, whoever emerges in the Super Bowl are going to be the best in the NFL. I agree that uh, the National Football League, uh, if indeed that's how they the two championships of the AFC and NFC, have done a tremendous job in salvaging the year, making it a meaningful Super Bowl championship. Ruin. He runs right into Harvey Martin, 79, and Ed Jones, 72. Now the two ends pinching in at the 35-yard line. You know, Merlin, we may be on a new record the longest time not allowing a touchdown in a season by an NFL team. The Cowboys have not allowed a touchdown in two, <laughs> wait a minute now, two I, months and six days. I know where you're days. going, Edberg. I know where you're going with that one. <laughs> two months and six days, they haven't allowed a score since St. Louis scored back in September. That's a great defense, I want to tell you. Touchdowns. They've allowed some points, but not a touchdown since September. Well, a case of the dropsy now. First it was White, and now the sure-fingered Dave Logan. We could almost use that as a, an illustration for a film on what not to do when that ball approaches you. Watch Logan look over his right shoulder as the ball arrives. Right here. He'll take his eye off the ball. You see him just turn his head slightly to the right to try and see where the defenders were. And he's thinking of making the big run after the catch. Got to catch the ball first, then worry about the run. Those peripheral catches are tough to make even for the outstanding receivers. Cox just gets it away. 
And Fellows again, no fair catch. 25. 27. You have a feeling watching Fellows, the daring type of return man he is, we're going to see him take one all the way before this season is over. He's that kind of daring, courageous runner that every coach longs for. Timeout, 31 0, Dallas. Yeah. Although he's handed off a couple, three times, he has not thrown an official National Football League pass. Has looked good in the preseason. Chippewas, those aren't squirrels, are they? No, come on, they're fighting up there in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. We've got their attention now. He tosses to the rookie, George Peoples, with a flag down. The rookie from Auburn with good yardage out to the 40, but I believe they're going to call that one back. I think what we saw was a, an illegal block. Yes, getting the signal from the Cowboys. We'll try and spot it for you right on the line of scrimmage. Peoples, uh, a surprising newcomer place. Tom Landry says every time we give him the ball, he makes something happen. He was an eighth-round pick out of Auburn. Of course, uh, Dallas hoping he's as successful as the other ex-Tigers, George Andrews and Joe Cribbs, James Brooks, who have succeeded in the NFL. And a light rain has begun to fall. Personal here foul, in Dallas. illegal crackback. Number 30 offense, still first down. Tim Newsom with a crackback block. That's a major penalty. 15 yards back to the 17. Unfortunately, one of the bigger gains the Browns have made all day. Oh, oh that's right. Negatively, that's right. A plus 15 against Dallas. Peoples, the only setback behind Hogaboom. Fumbles the snap. Still free. And Dallas has gotten every loose ball today, and they do again. Well, that's been remarkable. It's one of those days where you know if you're Sam Ritigliano that might as well go home and count your fingers and check your wallet because, uh, well, if uh, Sam Ritigliano and his Browns are not miserable enough already, they are now going to get soaking wet before this game is over. It's been a tough day for them, and I, I've been on the field with teams who have, in fact, I've been here in Dallas a time or two and been dusted that badly. And there, the frustration and the anger it's often harder to play a game like this, Dick, than it is to play one where you're winning. It certainly takes more out of you. I know that. So on second and long and another flag down. Hogaboom intercepted by number 50, Tom Cousineau, and he's inside the 20-yard line with his first National Football League interception. Now let's check the flag. It's against Dallas and, of course, Cleveland with its best opportunity today. This is the deepest they've been in Dallas territory all afternoon, and it's on a gift with eight minutes left. Well, it certainly would please the Browns to at least take that zero off the board. They'd like to end this game on a on a on an upbeat note. I'll tell you this, they're a good football team, Dick. I think they're going to play some excellent football before this year's out, and I think they're going to dump a few of those very heavy contenders that they're going to be running into and hopefully put them up the road a little bit. McDonald, plenty of time, and Dan Fulk, 86 from Nebraska Omaha, can't come up with it. Well, they're, they've shown they're an outstanding defense in their first three games. The Browns allowing only a total of 38 points, but Dallas has scored 31 today. And if Cleveland is outstanding defensively, then how good is Dallas? And uh, the other factor in the shortened season with only five games left, nine games total, every loss is really punishing. There's not any chance, well, we've got plenty of time. Every game is crucial. Now we'd have to wonder, too, uh, what this might do to the personal battle for position between Sykes and McDonald. McDonald's not doing much better than Sykes here. And second down, he has a man, Dino Hall. Touchdown. the football on time. Dino coming out of the backfield here. Circling out. Now he'll drive for the corner of the end zone against Bob Brunig, number 53. Downs coming over from his safety position, but neither of them could get there to take that football away from Dino Hall. Hall from Glassboro State. He's told his friends uh, who claimed he was crazy and he said, I'm not crazy for trying to play in the pros. I thought I really had a chance. 
And out of Glassboro State, he has his first touchdown receiving. Scored one rushing two years ago. Well, a little dent in the Dallas total, 31-7, with eight minutes remaining. A diamond. He went to seven the score. Now Hall takes his role as a special teams man. He's one of the wide men coming down under the kickoff. 18-yard pass for the score. Looking for the onside kick. Doug Donnelly and Ron Fellows come up to the 15-yard line. Yep, here comes the onside kick. Well, you can't uh, go out there and roll the ball any better than that. As Mike Whitwell, a rookie, number 81, makes the coverage. Just a perfect onside kick executed. It has to go 10 yards. Now watch this ball right into the corner down there, just barely 10 yards down, and they pass right there. Now they almost lost it out of bounds, just barely holding it in for big play. Steve Wright, number 73 over there, almost had a chance at that ball. McDonald's got it. Now let's see what he can do. He's going long for Ricky Peter. Intercepted by Emerson Walls. 20, 30, 40. And to the 46-yard line, his second today is third of the year. Emerson Walls went right over the top of Ricky Peter. Walls was 25, 30 yards up the field, and Peter's sitting in there, still on the ground, saying, what in the world happened? the NFL in interceptions last year as two today, Everson Walls. Now only Chrysler gives you three ways to save. One, the only 10.9 financing on many new 83 American-built front-wheel drive cars and pickups. Ford and GM don't do that. Two, 10.9 financing on many new 82s. And the Cowboys use the interception to score 17 second quarter scores, uh, points to lead 17 nothing at the half. They have a total of four in the game, two by Walls, and the ball now at the 45 of Cleveland. Fumble. Uh, Cleveland has the ball. The Hogaboom having trouble with the exchange from center. Uh, he's had two fumbled snaps and a pass interception, and not a good day in his short time in the fourth quarter for the young man from Central Michigan. Clarence Scott recovers for the Browns and you'd wonder how that can happen but a young quarterback getting into the game is so eager to get the play underway that very often he will pull out before that ball is properly snapped and we've seen that twice here by Hogaboom who's probably who probably doesn't take as many steps certainly doesn't take as many as Danny White and has not really had that much time in the ball game. You know, even facially looks a little like Roger Staubach when you see him under that helmet Hogaboom. from the 45 it's McDonald's turn the feature at the Dallas 40 tackled immediately by Dennis Thurman that'll be good for the first down feature from Mississippi Valley a very strong pass chance here to watch Ricky feature drive his man off Dennis Thurman right and you see that ball zipping right into features chest Thurman of course playing a little bit deep playing loose working on the clock they don't want to give anything deep so feature whose idol was the former Brown great Paul Warfield has the first down at the 40. McDonald flagged down. Dino Hall hit him in the shoulder. He looked for the ball and by the time he found it it was already on his pads and we have a little push and shove down there where that flag went down and Randy White's in the middle of it. So is Don Smerick. Joe DeLamalier number 64 Joe D in there getting a little push and shove going on. And as much stunning, and of course, this is the time of the game, as I mentioned, Dick, where the defensive linemen really have the advantage. They know that Cleveland has to throw the football, and they're just turning it loose. So Dallas commits the personal foul, and the 15-yard penalty will position Cleveland at the 25. Perhaps a head slap penalty or a face mask against the Dallas Cowboys. That hit Dino right in the head. <laughs> right in the helmet, knocked him down. <laughs> That looks like a piece out of the uh, football follies. Personal foul, illegal head slap, 54 defense, first down. You were right, Merlin. Head slap by Randy White. A device that uh, Deacon Jones, your former teammate, used so effectively before it was ruled illegal. I remember Deacon's 
cry of woe that they are taking everything away from him. Troy. Like a runaway bus is all the way to the 10-yard line. Brunig, Downs, and Dickerson teaming up to stop through it after 15 yards. Interesting, Dick, that even though the day certainly has not gone at all well for the Cleveland Browns, there's no quitting. And you notice there's not a, there are only a handful of players on the bench. Their enthusiasm is still there, and Sam Ratigliano and his staff have done a good job. I, I have good feelings about what lies in store for them. It's going to be a tough year because of their schedule. But I think they're going to play some good football. First and goal from the 10. McDonald to Dino Hall. No, it's Charles White. Charles White. For seven yards, it'll be second and goal at the three, and that stops the clock with 6.03 remaining in the game. Pruitt and White, a big man with power up ahead, and White, who can scamper out. What a day that was in 1980 when he was the most valuable player in the Rose Bowl, 247 yards rushing, and literally the 80-yard winning drive was just white after white after white to beat Michigan. I remember that game vividly. McDonald. Second and goal from the three. Dino Hall and he really didn't have time to turn as McDonald was pressured by Mike Hegman. Dave Logan, Charles White back into the lineup on third and goal. Paul and uh, Doug Deacon come out. They were using Deacon as a tight end. Short yardage. second Cleveland score with 556 left in the game and it's 31 13 has to put a little optimism into Sam Rotigiano's uh, evening as you watch the power and the acceleration of Pruitt runs through an arm tackle there just squares away and drives into that end zone he wasn't going to be denied on that one Rather academic, Dick, but still important for the Browns. They need to get themselves back on the track, and that may help. Matt Barr tacks on the extra point. Five minutes and 56 seconds remaining in the game here in Irving, Texas. 31-14 Dallas. This bud's for that first day on the job. Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that's set Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. This is an arcade game. This is the new Atari Super System. Arcade Atari Super System. You may like the Super System better. It has some of the best arcade and sports games and plays every Atari cartridge. It even does something no arcade game can. Telephone! It's Judy! It lets you freeze the action. Hello, Judy. The new 5200 Super System. Matt Barr teeing up the football. His onside kick was successful on the last endeavor. Now Dallas crowds nine men up close to the Cleveland 45-yard line. Only took a minute and a half for Cleveland to score after the fumble recovery. Five plays. Dennis Thurman, he could go all the way. He's to the 27-yard line, and a flag goes down. As Matt Barr kicked off and then used his legs to bring down Thurman chance for you to see it yourself. Now watch Barr. He runs everybody to the right. Now he'll kick this ball back to the left-hand side. 
a smart play, but Dennis Thurman grabs the ball. He's virtually all alone. Dino Hall misses him. And now let's check it downfield. You see Matt coming across right there. Look at, look at him using the legs. It's drop kick the legs out from underneath him. That's a soccer move. That's a tackle in soccer, but not in football. Number nine of the receiving team, tripping. First down. And yeah, that would have brought a whistle, uh, perhaps in uh, the sport of European football as well. So Barr at the 18-yard line and uh, might have hurt Barr as he's attended to. Newsom and Peoples behind quarterback Hogaboom. This is Peoples. And number 91, Henry Bradley, the middle guard, makes the tackle as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KYW-TV3 in Philadelphia. With Merlin Olson, Dick Enberg, uh, happy Thanksgiving from Irving, Texas, where most of the folks who did arrive, and it was the smallest crowd in eight years, 46,000 have headed home for the feast after enjoying uh, three quarters of the Cowboys devouring Cleveland, leading 31-0. Cleveland's two touchdowns here in the fourth quarter, and Matt Barr, and reaching out with that right foot instinctively, may have injured himself. He did injure himself, it's a matter of how serious. Peoples down to the 13-yard line, and when you see a number 22 on the back of a Dallas Cowboy, even though it's been a few years, you think of Bullet Bob Hayes. Let's go back to the play, Matt Barr. Actually, it's back to the field goal, Dick. He was bumped on the field goal, and, and you could tell it that he was he was hit on the knee. Watch it after the play is over. A bang right there on the leg. Yep, Michael Downs, the one that banged into him, and you see him grabbing his leg as he came up. Of course, he went right out and kicked again, but he may have injured his leg there, Dick. I was on the extra point. There was no penalty flag dropped on that play. Third down, about five. People. He's close to the five-yard line, and a first down for the Cowboys. Oh, he was around in the eighth round. There's something about those Auburn running backs. They seem to be running a factory for them in the National Football League. They load them up with something down there before they turn them loose. Oh, you can make a pretty good uh, core out of just those that have come out of there in the last five years. Andrews, Cribs, Brooks, and Peoples. Well, if Peoples comes anywhere near the performance of the others. He will make the Dallas Cowboys very happy. Cosby and Dupree look in the line, and people get the couple straight ahead. Bradley leading the defensive charge. Curtis Weathers also in on the tackle. Don't forget, Saturday here on NBC, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, 1 o'clock in the West, it'll be NBC Sports World Special Edition Encore Championship figure skating involving a list of names that truly is the Hall of Fame of figure skating. Gold medals galore, and it's a beautiful viewing experience. That's 4 o'clock on Saturday Eastern Time. Then on Sunday, a big NBC football doubleheader. Cincinnati, the AFC defending champions, will be hosting the San Diego Chargers, a rematch of the championship game. And then in the, check that, the L uh, LA Raiders will be uh, hosting. San Diego will be hosting Denver. Pokeboom, trying to find Cosby. Misfire. Look at that football schedule again. We have three early games, three late games as part of our doubleheader. The L.A. Raiders will be at Cincinnati. The Raiders 3-0 out of the gate against the Bengals. or 2-1. Houston at New England, Baltimore and Buffalo. And then in the late games, 3.30 uh, for NFL 82, 4 o'clock Denver at San Diego. Most of you will see that. Kansas City against the Rams and the Steelers 3-0 up at Seattle as the Seahawks still uh, a flush with their upset victory at Denver last Sunday. Third and goal. Newsom doesn't get in as Dick Ambrose makes the hit at the one yard line. Tremendous defensive play by Bam Bam Ambrose as he took that powerful running Newsom and stuffed him at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down. What do you do, Tom Landry? Oh, they'll go for it, don't you think? No need for a three-pointer here with a score of 31-14. And you almost have the feeling that they just assume not score, Dick. But it's hard to tell that to the guys who are getting a chance to play out there. So a Pat Donovan come in at left tackle with a play, replacing the rookie from Notre Dame, Phil Podkarak.
Peoples. Got just shy. And the Cleveland Browns with a solid defensive stand. Eddie Johnson, Dick Ambrose, the rookie Mark Defensis, Keith Baldwin, a lot of young names, new names for the Browns surrounding the ball. And what? Baldwin, 99, from Texas A&M, a second-round pick coming on. One thing we should mention, too, Dick, and that is that few coaches could turn over a roster, put 20 new names on a roster, as uh, Coach Sam Ricciano did, and expect his team to be competitive. Uh, the Browns have been competitive, and as I said, we'll play some good football through the year, but they really have made so many changes that it has to hurt them, and it had to hurt them to come back after that layoff because a lot of those new faces and new names were not totally familiar with the system. Paul McDonald starting from his own one-yard line, actually inside the one. And he's going to go for the bomb to Newsom. No, he's going to go this way. The rookie Dwight Walker all to his 47-yard line. They sent Newsom, the tight end, streaking deep down the middle, and that took two Cowboys. And a beautiful throw, McDonald leading Walker down the sidelines. Let's get in Paul McDonald's back pocket for this play. A little fake inside to Pruitt. McDonald launching this one right over the top. A perfect pitch. Takes it on the inside, and Walker outruns the two defenders up the sideline. Picks up big yardage on the play. Thurman coming over to knock him out of bounds. Director Ted Nathanson, Larry Thriller, our producer, and a great camera coverage. So that's in the two angles. McDonald again to Newsom at the 35, and he goes out of bounds at the Dallas 31. A first down at 201, and so they, with two, I believe it was 15. They got away two long plays and still stop the clock and get another play before the two-minute warning timeout. 22 yards on this last play. Watch Newsom now. That ball is in the air right now. The ball is already coming down. Well ahead of Newsom's cut. Beautiful play. Beautiful unspoken coordination between the receiver Newsom and the quarterback Paul McDonald. So 201 left. The score is 31-14. Dallas once leading 31-0. And McDonald trying to salvage some score respect. The free ball, and you saw Dennis Thurman. He had eyes on a touchdown, but couldn't pick it up on a bounce. Mike Pruitt covered for Cleveland. Dallas has it at the 49. Dexter Clinkstale of South Carolina State, number 47, forced the fumble. Unusual, but Clinkstale coming from the left-hand side defensively is blindside on McDonald, the left-handed quarterback, and chops him in half. And now with timeout, here comes another one of those fantastic finishes. Sheet of ice as Bart Starr keeps the ball and sneaks into the end zone for the score. Who made the block that sprung him? Right guard Jerry Kramer against massive Jethro Pugh. The Packers win 21-17 and claim the NFL championship. Quink scale, forcing the fumble, recovered by Dennis Thurman. Overbone has people and Newsom with him, and it's Newsom. Good man to the 43-yard line. Ambrose and Cousineau made the tackle. 45 and the clock running. The coordinating producer of NBC's NFL football is Ted Nathanson. Today's telecast was produced by Larry Cirillo, directed by Ted Nathanson. NFL 82, produced by Ron Kershaw and David Neal, directed by John Filippelli. Technical directors were Bill Toby and Neil Flagg. Associate director, John Libretto. Associate producer, Glenn Adamo. Associate producer, NFL 82, Tom Roy. And we'd like to thank those that helped us here in the broadcast booth. Player identification, Doug Adams and John Nelson, assisting with statistics and all the numbers James Davis Mitchell Lewis Jr. Bruce Jollish and Joe Costanza with a Thanksgiving whip out to keep everyone in shape 31-14 261 yards rushing for the Cowboys 78 for the Browns and when you can run the ball that effectively no question about who controls the line of scrimmage no question about who controls the game I would think that uh, coaches and players looking in from around the league concerned about the strength that the Dallas Cowboys have shown here tonight. And certainly that's a rather unhappy figure of Brian Seif on the sideline. Not the kind of game that he would like to have played tonight. 
Paul McDonald has had some uh, better plays but of course working against a lot of the reserves of the Cowboys. Dallas losing its opener to Pittsburgh 36 28 then beat St. Louis 24 7 before the strike came back did not play well last Sunday and beating Tampa Bay 14 9 the Buccaneers did everything but win. Up the middle goes George Peoples and a first down at the 39 and now it's just academic a matter of if Cleveland doesn't want to use a timeout letting the clock run. Danny White leader starting quarterback of the Cowboys a, a good day in victory. Although, as Merlin pointed out, it was really Tony Dorsett, Ron Springs, and the runners of the Cowboys that did the work out distancing Cleveland. That's interesting. The, uh, you add in the passing yardage, uh, things are much closer. But, of course, a lot of that yardage has come late and has come in the game when Father Murphy, uh, <laughs> that a sportscaster visits the uh, Father Murphy clan, you don't really like that concept. And we have a, buck, a bucking Bronco scene for you next week. Uh, can we get you out to the Toronto? Are you, are you the writer? No, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just watch. I'll, I'll watch. Now, the turnover is even. But uh, Dallas in that second quarter turned a couple of interceptions into quick touchdowns to lead 17 nothing at the hand. 129 left. It was Cleveland's timeout. Newsom hit from behind at the 35 yard line. Curtis Weathers. He's played a fine game. 6-5 linebacker from Mississippi, number 55. He was a ninth round pick in uh, 79. He was second in his high school days in the decathlon in the Tennessee State Championships. One of the things that has to be a little bit of a concern to Tom Landry is his center situation. Tom Rafferty, a converted guard, playing very well there. But I see that, that Landry has put Brian Baldinger in there, letting him play some center position and in case an injury uh, should happen to Rafferty, who's been very dependable. But that's the kind of thing that could hurt these Cowboys. Back to Landry and this Dallas Cowboy organization. In the eagerness for franchises to win, sometimes they're not very patient. And Dallas, when you consider Landry's in his 23rd year, you forget that they weren't a winning team the first five years. And about the third year, the fans here started to grumble. And Tex Ram said, what can we do about it? Went to owner Murchison. He said, well, give him a 10-year contract. That'll quiet him. What a wise move that was. Dick, if you look at the successful franchise, if you look at this Dallas franchise, you look at the L.A. Raiders, of course, formerly in Oakland under Al Davis, you look at what Don Shula has done in Miami, you look at what Chuck Knoll has done up in Pittsburgh, those are all situations where you have continuity and you have a continuing plan and strength of management that allows for successful operation. You're not changing directions every three or four days. And some franchises never seem to hit that level because they're putting new coaches in the ballgame constantly. Add to that statistic five championships, two Super Bowls, to show you the consistency of quality Landry and the Cowboys in the last 12 years. They have been in the NFC championship game nine of the 12 years. And after watching them today, you wonder what it won't be 10 out of 13 as Newsom stays in bounds and is to the six yard line. So Newsom looked as if he was going to step out of bounds, was able to cut back and Maintain possession, 21, 20 seconds left. That may be the last play. His feet terribly close to going out of bounds, but Newsom showing excellent speed and body control as he tiptoed down the sideline. 11, 10, 9, ticking off. Landry on another play. There's no need to add to the lead. So Tom Landry and the Dallas Cowboys have won on Thanksgiving Day once again. A wave to Retigliano. A 31 to 14 victory for Dallas. They're now three and one. Cleveland is two and two. Let's go to Len Berman. Thank you, Dick Enberg. Two things. Earlier today, the Giants beat Detroit 13 to six, and Cowboys president Tex Schramm.